TitleMatchNetwork.com. The AWA Hulk Hogan. Uh, you were with Hogan a lot back then. Um, did you see, uh, was, was it, what, could you put your finger on what Hulk Hogan was going to be in his AWA days? And was he frustrated in the AWA? Well, actually, if, if I can start from the beginning, he had not gotten back from Japan yet before he was supposed to make his appearance in the AWA for Vern Gagne. This was big prize, the guy with the big name coming off the movie, Rocky Three. Right. And uh, he had Eye of the Tiger <laughs> for his uh, theme song. And that was a very energetic, uh, high energy song. And, and, it, and it fit him to a T. The only thing is early on, he wasn't quite as, I guess, uh, good at communicating as he became a little bit later on. There were a lot of, uh, just a minute, brother. Did you help him with that? Did I what? Did you help him develop his, his well, interview style? Well, I had to help him. You gotta go through the three minute interviews. Right. Can't just stand there alone with uh, your hand on a morning newspaper, for lack of a better term. <laughs> right. But but he got better and better and better. He became more valuable to the uh, to the company. Johnny Valiant, who was his manager initially, was thrown out, and uh, he became instead of a heel, a huge baby face. Right. And I mean, he went that route until the NWO. Now, do you think it was a mistake uh, back in the AWA days not giving him the title? I beg your pardon? Not giving Hulk Hogan the AWA World Championship? Do I think that was a, 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 I think that was a problem for Vern Gagne. Right. Because if he gave him the title, he'd have to give him merchandise. Right. And this and that. I did the eulogy at Vern Gagne's funeral, and I love the man. Right. He was a great sportsman, great athlete and pretty knowledgeable in his uh, wrestling business and putting angles together. He himself wasn't a great communicator, but he could develop guys like Bobby Heenan, Nick Bockwinkle. I mean, I can go down that list of, of lines, the Blackjacks, sure. uh, the High Flyers, Mad Dog with Sean, the Crusher, the Bruiser, could go on all day about the old school in the AWA. And that's what it was. It was old school. Now, uh, we did an interview with uh, Greg Gagne, and he told an interesting story. I, I, I wanna throw it by you. Maybe you, you're not privy to this. Uh, maybe you've never heard this before. Maybe you have. I could back up a lie any time I want. Oh, well, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> uh, so Greg told us that uh, he, he, they had a plan in place for Hulk Hogan, where they were gonna do a big, angle with him where they were going to fly him to Russia and he was going to wrestle some star in Russia. And they were on their way with the contracts and big money deal for, to send Hulk Hogan to Russia. And they couldn't reach him in time by the time he had already got on the plane and flown to New York. Have you ever heard that story? Well, but I've got some, a little different top spin on that story. I think that's what they had kind of planned to do with him. And, and indeed, they had somebody set up in Russia for him to work with. But he was in Japan working for uh, Antonio Inoki right. at the time. And uh, also did a little work with Baba. There's a real strange twist <laughs> because that's two different promotions in the same country. Uh, Hulk had made up his mind and he wasn't going to go with this a uh, story about Russia and a match that's going to have the entire world, you know, on its heels. So he knew he knew about this before. Oh, he knew it. Oh, okay. Without a question. Okay, interesting. So he and he he didn't want anything. He, his mind was pretty much made up. So if they would have reached him in time, it wouldn't have made a difference. They could have never. They wouldn't have had the wherewithal to put together. And, and I'm not taking anything away from Greg or from Vern. They did not have the uh, intellectual or, or, or the, the, you know, kind of the stage presence to put this together with Hulk Hogan like Vince McMahon did. Right. And of course, that just kind of grew from the day that he came here in 1983 and early 84, right up until WrestleMania. Sure. And by that time, ha ha, 
Showtime! It's over! <laughs> and if you fans don't know what we're talking about, you can go and pick up the Greg Gagne shoot available on rfvideo.com. It's very interesting, and you can hear this whole story as Greg Gagne laid this out. I always wanted to ask me and Gene about this because you were so close to that situation. And for me, that, that story was... It's partially right. It was, it was a very interesting story, and yeah. I... And I I mean, I pressed him on it. It's a real left field. It is. Yeah. It is. And Russia. Right. And, and the, the hell is a guy, Trump? And I, I, he wouldn't, he wouldn't uh, say, I wanted to look, uh, he didn't say who the opponent was or anything more about where it was going to be. It, it, it was a Russian Olympian. Okay. Uh, 1980, Brad Ringens from the AWA had made the U.S. Olympic wrestling team. If you probably don't recall because you probably weren't around. 1980 Olympics were boycotted by the United States and nobody showed up. Right. So this was going to be kind of the back end of what didn't happen at the Olympics. And it would be the story of Hulk Hogan representing the good old U.S. of A. against uh, Sergei, whoever it was. Snack a cough. Right. Right. I kind of I kind of like the angle, uh, but I don't know if it would have worked. You're, you're not going to put me on the spot <laughs> on that one, as you already have. <laughs> no, I won't. Talk into I, my time. I guarantee I won't. I won't. I won't. I won't ask you any more about that. But it's a, just it was an interesting story. So the details were too sketchy for me to really put my my hands around it. Put my sure. You, even even a, the noggin around. It sounds like a desperate move to keep them. That, that's, that's what it desperate felt. Desperate people make desperate moves. Sure. The best thing that Vern Gagne could have done for him and his family is when Vince McMahon gave him a very attractive buyout and he didn't take it. Right. He said, bullshit. I'm not going to let some Irishman beat me. Hmm. That was it. And he finally ended up losing... The whole farm. He sure did. Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah. He was a very wealthy man at one time. Yeah. Some said close to $40 million. Now, if you take a look at that, back in 1985, 86, 87, that was a lot of do re mi. Yeah. Now, was the AWA, was that the first time you ever met Bobby Heenan? It was. I'd seen Bobby Heenan on, before I even got into it as a broadcaster. Right. Bobby Heenan started in the AWA. I believe in 1969. I went on the air in April of 1971 for the first time, and we really haven't stopped since then. Right. What were your first impressions of uh, Bobby the Brain? I, I didn't know what to think because he, he was, he'd shoot with you. Sure. And, and a lot of the old guys would. Right. Uh, and at that particular point in time, Bobby and myself became very famous friends. We went around AWA together, WWE together, WCW together. So now you're in New York. Uh, do they, are you put with Hogan? Like uh, it, Ho Hogan's there, um, the, the natural chemistry between you two. Um, is it, is it a, a, by design that you're gravitated towards Hulk Hogan? Uh, gravitating toward him household. As you are sort of his personal uh, interviewer, like you, you did all the interviews for Hulk Hogan. Yeah, but I, you were... I think at that time I was probably doing all of the all of the interviews and trying to stay as uh, uh, neutral as I possibly could in the angles, but still get them over. Get, right, get Hogan's side over and get whoever Hogan was was going to be meeting over. Sure. How did you take the, the play by play role? The play by play role was when. Vince got into something else, he'd take off the cans and say, <laughs> you take over. Right. Because I never liked doing play-by-play. -play. Right. That was, that was your original role. I, I, I do remember when, right. I, when, when you came in. I remember uh, being a kid hearing you for well, the first Vince's, time. Well, Vince is in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, just, it, it was like that. Snatch out. Yeah.